Welcome to our journey through the opulent Gilded Age mansions of New York City. Join us as we delve into the grandeur, luxury, and fascinating history behind these architectural marvels that defined an era of wealth and excess. Discover the stories of the wealthy elite who inhabited these palatial residences and the legacy they left behind. The most elite citizens of New York City descended upon 355th Avenue one evening in the middle of the 1880s for the season's most anticipated gathering, Mrs. Caroline Shermerhorn Astor's 400 Party. The upper class of New York City assembled that evening, as they did frequently during the Gilded Age, for a gala at a home that was magnificent, luxurious, and elitist, just like its guests. Years later, Mrs. Astor's old sidekick Ward McAllister would disclose the guest list for the event in the New York Times, claiming that there are only about 400 people in fashionable New York society. Welcome to our media, where creativity meets curiosity. Join us on an exhilarating journey through the realms of finance knowledge, entertainment, and inspiration. Hit that subscribe button and prepare to dive into a world of captivating content. Mansions number one, the original Vanderbilt Mansion, New York City. The original Vanderbilt Mansion in New York City was built for Cornelius Vanderbilt I.I., the eldest grandson of railroad and shipping magnate Commodore Vanderbilt. The house featured a chateau-esque design, limestone trim, and a red brick exterior. It was the largest private residence ever built in New York City, with over 130 rooms. The mansion was located at 1 West 57th Street, on the corner of 5th Avenue. It was designed by architect George B. Post in the Chateau-esque style, which was popular at the time for its medieval look. The exterior of the mansion was made of red brick with limestone trim. The roof was topped with turrets and towers, and there was a large portico chair at the entrance. The interior of the mansion was just as impressive as the exterior. The main floor featured a grand staircase, a ballroom, a library, and a dining room. There were also several sitting rooms and bedrooms. The upper floors were dedicated to bedrooms and servants' quarters. The mansion was equipped with the latest technology for the time, including a steam heating system, an electric elevator, and a telephone. There was also a dedicated staff of over 100 people to take care of the mansion and its occupants. The original Vanderbilt Mansion was a symbol of wealth and power. It was a place where the Vanderbilts could entertain their friends and business associates, and it was also a place where they could show off their status to the rest of the world. The mansion was a popular tourist destination, and it was even featured in a few movies. The original Vanderbilt Mansion was demolished in 1926 to make way for the Bergdorf Goodman department store. The demolition of the mansion was controversial, but it ultimately paved the way for the development of Midtown Manhattan. Mansions number two, the residence of William and Alva Vanderbilt, the Petit Chateau. The residence of William and Alva Vanderbilt, the Petit Chateau, was built in 1883 at 665th Avenue in Manhattan, New York City. It was designed by architect Richard Morris Hunt, in the French Renaissance style. The mansion was named Petit Chateau, French for Little Castle, by Alva Vanderbilt, who wanted a home that was both elegant and understated. The mansion had over 100 rooms, including a ballroom, a library, a music room, and a winter garden. It was also equipped with the latest technology for the time, including a steam heating system, an electric elevator, and a telephone. There was also a dedicated staff of over 100 people to take care of the mansion and its occupants. The Petit Chateau was a symbol of wealth and power. It was a place where the Vanderbilts could entertain their friends and business associates, and it was also a place where they could show off their status to the rest of the world. The mansion was a popular tourist destination, and it was even featured in a few movies. The Petit Chateau was sold in 1940 and is now a private residence. It is no longer as grand as it once was, but it still retains some of its original charm. The mansion is a reminder of the Gilded Age when the Vanderbilts were one of the richest families in America. Mansions number three, the Astor Mansion at 355th Ave. The Astor Mansion at 355th Avenue was built in 1862 for John Jacob Astor, I.I.I., one of the richest men in the world at the time. 
The mansion was designed by architect James Renwick Jr. in the Italianate style. It was one of the first mansions to be built on Fifth Avenue, and it quickly became a social center for New York City's elite. The mansion had over 50 rooms, including a ballroom, a library, and a music room. It was also equipped with the latest technology for the time, including a hot water heating system and an indoor plumbing system. There was also a dedicated staff of over 100 people to take care of the mansion and its occupants. The Astor Mansion was a symbol of wealth and power. It was a place where the Astors could entertain their friends and business associates, and it was also a place where they could show off their status to the rest of the world. The mansion was a popular tourist destination, and it was even featured in a few movies. The Astor Mansion was sold in 900 to the Equitable Life Assurance Society, which used it as its headquarters for a number of years. The mansion was demolished in 1926 to make way for the Empire State Building. The Astor Mansion was a grand and imposing building that was a testament to the wealth and power of the Astor family. It was a landmark on Fifth Avenue for many years, and it played a significant role in the social and cultural life of New York City. The Gilded Age mansions of New York City stand as a testament to a bygone era of luxury, excess, and ambition. Join us in our next adventure as we continue to uncover the stories behind the world's most captivating historical treasures. Don't miss our upcoming videos. Like, share, and subscribe for more captivating exploration.